So we've written many interesting uh, functions in C, but we haven't actually written a full C program. It turns out if you want to write a full C program, you have to write a special function called main. And in fact, your operating system will treat your whole program as if it was this function called main that returns an int. So what is this int? Well, the operating system is usually expecting your program to return the integer zero to indicate that your program exited normally. In case something bad happens, we typically try and return a non-zero value to indicate uh, that something bad happened. So uh, the simplest C program you could ever write is just this, this one line, int main return zero. Now, although you can write code like this in a single line, uh, you should never write code like this because this is really difficult to read when everything is squished up. So in C, you can always add extra lines and spaces to make your code look prettier. And so the same function, I'm actually going to write across three different lines. I have put the return zero statement on its own. And also I have pushed it inside. Uh, this is something called indenting your code. And you should always indent your code neatly so that it's easy to read. And in fact, if you develop your programs in any modern integrated development environment or IDE, then it will automatically indent the code for you. I also want to make some notes about style. So some style guides say that you shouldn't actually write int main like this with nothing inside the round brackets. Uh, there are two versions of main, one that takes no arguments, which is what I have shown here, and another version that takes arguments. But if you really want to write the main with no arguments, then some style guides suggest that you should actually put the special word in C called void, which really means there's nothing here uh, inside the round brackets. There are some resources out there, including some textbooks, that suggest that you can also write void main. But that is wrong. Uh, in fact, it's very bad programming style to write C programs with void main. So I strongly recommend that you don't do that. So let's go ahead and try and write this code out uh, and run the program. And we'll also try and write a program that has main call another function because that's typically what we want to do. So let's switch over to my IDE. Uh, so this is Visual Studio Code. And I'm going to go ahead and start typing int main. Now notice that whenever, as soon as I press the opening round bracket, the IDE automatically puts the closing round bracket uh, because as programmers, we often forget to do these things. So my IDE is trying to help me out. Exactly the same thing happens when I press the opening curly bracket, but I don't want the second curly bracket on the same line. So I'm going to hit enter and it has automatically indented my statement for me because I'm going to write something inside the main function. So here I'm going to write return uh, zero and I must not forget to put my semicolon which is again something we tend to forget as programmers. Um, now in my IDE I have set it up so that I can just click this one button and it will compile my code uh, and exit with code equal to zero. So this is the value that is being returned by my main to the operating system. I can confirm this by changing this zero to a one. Any legal int uh, should work. So I'm going to return uh, one this time. And you notice it has exited with code equal to one. Now we can experiment with this since it's any legal integer seems to be fine. How about minus one? Uh, so let me just clear this and run with minus one. And here I must warn you, that what happens depends from one operating system to another. I'm using Windows here. So in fact, it has returned this crazy answer. It turns out that this number 4.29, etc. billion uh, is the largest representable unsigned integer. So what's happening is that even though I have a main that is returning an int, a uh, signed int, meaning it could also represent negative numbers. Uh, for Windows, 
the return value of the main program is reinterpreted as an unsigned int. And so this minus one is actually wrapping around uh, to the top end of the unsigned integer range, which is this, you know, roughly 4 billion. Okay, so we don't want that. We want to return zero. That's what we normally do. Uh, let us now try and write a function. So the simplest function, the one that we wrote first, if you remember, just took one integer argument and it returned uh, that x plus one. So how do we link this function to the main? Well, one way we can do that is instead of returning zero, let's call the function here. So let's return f of zero. So f of zero is going to be one. So if this is going to work, then I should see the exit code one. And in fact, that's what I see. Now I could use this trick to, you know, look at the results of the any function f that I write, but we've already seen that, you know, if your function happens to return a negative number, then this is a very awkward way of uh, trying to understand what the return value is. And of course, we could write functions that return doubles and things like that. So we don't want to do this, right? Um, so surely there should be a good way of just printing out the value of f uh, that, uh, you know, we want to call on some arguments. But it turns out that there isn't a print function in C, but there is something very similar. But to call that function, first we have to hash include a header file called stdio.h. So this stands for standard input output. And this defines several functions. One of them is this function called printf. And ideally what I would like to say is printf, you know, f of zero or whatever it is that I want to print. Uh, but it turns out printf is a little more complicated than that. So this is an integer and we have to tell printf that the first thing we want to do is we want to treat that integer as a decimal and we want to print that integer out as a decimal. So inside double quotes we have to say percent %d for decimal, then close the double quotes and then after a comma give the integer that we want to print. So in this case I'm telling printf I want to print this value f of zero as a decimal. Uh, you notice on line eight, I'm getting this error message. That's because I have forgotten something on line seven, and you can see that it's the semicolon. So as soon as I put the semicolon, uh, that red mark disappears on line eight, uh, and now my code is good to go. I'll save it, and now when I run this, I'm going to see the value one because that is f of zero. So it's printed the value one, and then it's exited with code equal to zero because I returned zero. Now the printf statement, uh, you know, I can add some text to it just to make it clearer. So I can say something like answer colon and maybe a space so that it prints this out. Answer is something. Maybe I even want to put a new line here. So backslash n is for new line. And this, as you will see, will put a little bit of a space between the answer and the exit code. Uh, so there is a space over here between the answer and the exit code. So this is how we can write main programs that print things and call other functions that we have written. So let's go back to our IDE because I want to show you something interesting. So here is essentially the same code that we wrote. The only difference is here I'm still returning uh, on line six uh, the function f of minus one. So f of minus one is zero, so this is going to return zero. So I want to show you this version, but I'm going to show this to you in another uh, environment called Python Tutor. And Python Tutor, as the name suggests, is meant for Python code, but it turns out it can also uh, visualize uh, C programs. So this visualization is going to be really useful for us later when we look at complicated code. But let me just show this visualization to you on this very, very toy uh, program that just is going to return zero by calling the function f. So here we are in uh, Python Tutor. This is on, uh, it's a web-based environment. 
So this red arrow indicates uh, the statement that is about to execute next. Uh, we're inside main about to execute the statement on line six, which is return f of minus one. And of course, before we can compute what f of print what f of minus one is, we have to compute it. And so that computation is going to happen up here where the function f is defined. Over here on the right, it's going to show us where we are in our code. And this picture is going to update each time we hit next. So right now we're inside main and we're about to hit next. So when I call next, when I click next, the red arrow jumps to line one because we have to compute f of minus one. So the focus has shifted. We're outside the function outside the function main. We're inside the function f. This f uh, has this x inside it. That is this x. And there's a question mark over here to indicate that, well, I don't yet know what the value of f or of x is. Uh, all I do know is it's an int. It's very hard to see this. It's uh, written in very small letters that this x is an int, but I don't yet know what value uh, this x has. This value is going to be passed by uh, the uh, main function and it's calling it with the argument minus one. So when I hit next, you'll see that x does indeed have this value minus one. So this is how Python Tutor allows us to visualize things. If there's anything that's unclear, I can always go back one step or use the slider in case I have many, many steps to find the exact point in the code that I'm trying to understand. And when I've understood that, I can go next and get to this point. So now I'm trying to return x plus one on line two and x is minus one. So this is obviously going to return the value zero. So when I'm done with this, I'm about to exit out of my function f because I have just hit a return statement. As soon as I hit a return statement in a function, I quit it. And if it has a return value, that's the value I'm going to return. And what's happening to this value zero? Well, I'm trying to return that value from the main program. So this main program is going to return the value zero. And it says I'm done. It even tells me how many steps I have taken. So we're going to use this visualization, as I said, to uh, look at more sophisticated code. But here I just wanted to introduce the visualization to you. Let us go back and wrap up with a few points uh, that we have seen. So we noticed that what we had seen was this value minus one on line six is being passed over uh, to this x inside the function f. So we're going to introduce some useful terminology here uh, so to, to describe this process of calling functions. So what we will say is that this value minus one is the argument to the function. We have been using this term, uh, but this x uh, that is a part of f, we will use a slightly different term. We will call this the parameter of the function f. Sometimes uh, these words arguments and parameters are used interchangeably, but just for clarity, we will use arguments for the values and parameter for these variables uh, like x, etc., that actually hold those values. So we saw in the visualization that this parameter is initially uh, blank. It's got this question mark inside it. Well, it turns out variables are never blank. That was just a trick to show you the visualization. Uh, but when we call this function with the argument minus one, then that parameter x is initialized or set to minus one because that was the argument that was passed. So we will use these terms parameter, initialization, and argument uh, in the subsequent videos. And we will say that in this case that parameters are initialized by the function that called them. So they're initialized by the caller. So there are many, many words here uh, to get familiar with. Feel free to play this video a few more times to make sure you understand it. And do check out the link to Python Tutor uh, because it's very useful to uh, visualize your code. And I hope you find this useful.